Anthony Cody is the author of The Educator and the Oligarch, A Teacher Challenges the Gates Foundation. Can a teacher challenge the wealthiest man in the world? This is the question Garn Press asked in 2014 when Anthony Cody's The Educator and the Oligarch was first published. The answer is a resounding yes. Anthony, Anthony Cody not only challenged Bill Gates, but also received the 2015 NCTE George Orwell Award, which recognizes writers who have made, who made outstanding contributions to the critical analysis of public discourse, and the 2015 E-Lit Silver Medal Award in the Education Academic Teaching category. In recognition of the importance of Anthony's steadfast resistance to Gates's unacceptable manipulation of public education policies, Garn Press published a new edition of The Educator and the Oligarch with a new preface by Anthony, which is available in paperback and ebook formats and for the first time as a hardcover book. Based on indisputable scientific research evidence in this book, Anthony Cody makes the case that the chosen path of Bill Gates and the Gates Foundation's data-driven education reform centered on high-stakes tests, educational technology, and market-based competition between schools threatens great harm to public education. The Educator and the Oligarch is a book for parents and teachers and a must-read indictment of big money public school reform for all politicians policymakers, and public officials. It was a sunny day in the July of 2012 when the head of the Gates Foundation picked me up in his Lexus and drove me to their gleaming headquarters in Seattle, a few blocks away from the Space Needle. We walked through the polished lobby, through the informal seating areas that looked like pages out of a Danish modern catalog. We settled in a meeting room where the blinds adjusted automatically to control the temperature inside. Over a breakfast, he asked me if I would join him in a sincere effort at reaching common ground. He said in five years' time, he wanted us to be able to look back and know that we had done our best. I spent that day in a head-spinning series of meetings with various combinations of the Gates Foundation's education team all were intent on demonstrating to me their knowledge about schools and desire to make things better. I heard about the now defunct teacher evaluation program in Hillsboro. But the statement that stayed with me was when a former teacher told me, we can only manage what we can measure. This is the business they are in, management. And those of us doing the work of teaching and learning are the subjects of measurement so that we can be better managed. At the end of these meetings, I joined the head of the Gates Foundation to stroll around the museum they have built to it, devoted to extolling their virtues and talked about where we might take the conversation next. The dialogue then shifted to our blogs where I did my best to make the case for a different approach to school reform. Four years have passed since that visit the Gates Foundation's reform project has few successes to speak of. The Common Core is on life support. Charter schools have been largely discredited as models of innovation. But Gates swaggers on because being the richest man in the world means never having to admit you are wrong and certainly never having to say you are sorry. The educator has yet to meet oligarch, but we hold him to account for his destructive effort on our schools and children nonetheless. Emperors can hire experts and build, muse build museums to celebrate their beneficence, but the truth comes out in the end. The Gates Foundation, Brian Williams said in the NBC News Initiative and Education Nation, is one of the sponsors of this event and the single largest funder of education anywhere in the world. It's their facts that we're going to be referring to often to help along our conversation. It may surprise you, Bill and Melinda Gates agreed in grading the teachers their editorial that they wrote in the Wall Street Journal. It was certainly surprising to us, but the field of education doesn't know very much at all about effective teaching. If the Gates Foundation wishes to reverse the effects of the war that has 
been so devastatingly waged against the teaching profession, it must first come to terms with the role it has played. Any attempt to dance around the very real damage that has been done invites dismissal by honest teachers. Evaluations that rely in any way on VAM scores are causing great harm to teachers and their students. If the Gates Foundation is accountable for its work, it must undo the harm to which it has in major part contributed. Bill Gates falls below standards in four areas. Standard number one, awareness of the social, in, uh, social conditions targeted by philanthropy. Standard number two, understanding of how learning is measured. Standard number three, understanding of how teaching is evaluated. And standard number four, understanding of effective instruction. Therefore, his philanthropic activities should be suspended immediately pending his completion of the recommended professional growth activities. This is the beginning of what might be a far more complex process of reflection for Bill Gates. It might be seen as absurd, but my intention is sincere. His thinking is magnified in its effect by the billions he has to spend as he chooses. With such power comes a huge responsibility to learn from one's mistakes. I do not know how Bill Gates reflects on the successes and failures of his work. There's no evidence of any significant thoughtful reflection in his public writing. Fairness demands that accountability cannot be a one-way street. If Bill Gates demands that, pe that teachers be held accountable for their work, surely he must accept some accountability for his. What is good for the poor geese ought to be good for the billionaire gander even if he does lay golden eggs. When I think of my own students in Oakland, my goal was not just to teach them the facts of science. I wanted to give them power in relationship to the world they encounter. I wanted them to be able to seek their own questions, to ask their own questions and use the tools of science to investigate the world. Our disciplines of science, language arts, social studies, art and math, are not just bodies of knowledge to be memorized. They are ways of interrogating and changing reality. History is an inquiry into the past that helps us understand our present and change our future. Language arts helps us to understand the writings of others, but also to express our own ideas in powerful ways. Great nations rise and recede, and so does the power of the mighty. The power that depends on spending billions of dollars to buy influence and on the use of government coercion is illusory. It exists only so long as the billions keep flowing and the government power holds sway. The power of human imagination and desire for autonomy will always survive and when the time is right, the mighty will fall. <laughs>